everyone. Thank you for joining us on today's kindergarten live segment for the Peel District School Board. My name is Nav Sahoda. I'm the communication specialist, and I'm excited to be here with our panel Love Early Years team. So introducing Kathy Roper, coordinating principal of elementary education, Noreen Jaffrey, uh, designated early childhood educator, and Sergio Pascucci, um, early years instructional coordinator. So thank you for being here with us to answer some questions that we've gotten from parents, families who are excited to be uh, welcome to kindergarten. So we've gotten questions that have been submitted in advance uh, through social media, through email as well. And for those that are just tuning in live, you're still able to submit questions uh, through the comment section. We'll try to answer as many questions as we can together, but in the case that we can't get to all of them today, just know that we'll be responding to all of them um, later after the segment as well. So let's get started and talk about kindergarten. Um, just to start off before, first, I know families are always eager to get started, uh, register for kindergarten, know how they can prepare their child, and we'll be going through a lot of that as we answer some of those questions. But let's talk about first what the kindergarten program at the Peel District School Board looks like. Uh, so the program is a two-year program um, with two educators, a teacher and an early childhood educator. Uh, in the Peel Board, students uh, remain with the same educator team for the full two years. Um, rather than being separated uh, according to junior kindergarten or senior kindergarten, we refer to them as our year one children and our year two children. Um, the program is play-based and grounded in the belief that uh, children are capable, competent, and rich in potential. They are very sophisticated thinkers. So the uh, program provides many opportunities for them to design and create and problem solve. Uh, they'll construct things, they'll test their theories based on their curiosity. So there's a lot of experimentation and they'll develop their literacy and mathematical skills all through play. And these are really all skills that set the foundation for lifelong learning. And it's important to note that the academic learning happens through the play. It's not separate from the play. So many times uh, families will ask, so how does my child learn through play? And just to give you a couple of examples, uh, when your child is uh, doing a puzzle, they're actually focusing on shape recognition skills and problem solving skills. And when they're playing in the dramatic play center, they're negotiating with their friends, they're designing and creating, as well as building on their um, oral language skills. And as Sergio said, literacy and mathematical behaviors are demonstrated throughout the day in all parts of the program. So to build on what Noreen said, she talked about jigsaw puzzles and, and children completing those puzzles. Well, when children see how the pieces of a puzzle fit together, it helps them to start to see how words fit together and words become sentences and sentences paragraphs. Perfect. So who can go to kindergarten? A lot of our parents are eager to get started. Uh, is there a certain age range that kindergarten students must be? So um, for September of 2020, any child born between January the 1st, 2016 and December 31st, January, um, December 31st, 2016, they can register to begin kindergarten in September of 2020. Okay, so that means children who are age three right now, what about them? So again, they need to be four by December 31st. Okay. And if they are, they're more than welcome to attend. Otherwise, they'll have to wait a year, but we'll be thrilled to have them when it's their turn. Uh, let's talk about the role of the two educators. I know it was mentioned earlier. Um, can you tell us what it looks like? How are they involved in the classroom? What's their role? So the beauty about the kindergarten program is that there are two, educator, ed, two educators, as we've mentioned. There is an early childhood educator and a OCT, and they each bring complementary skills into the classroom that nurture and um, build on the skills that the child has already coming into kindergarten. The team is absolutely critical and so um, the OCT or, or is the teacher who's registered with the Ontario College of Teachers just as the early childhood educator is registered with the College of Early Childhood Educators. Their partnership working together for all the children is what is the wealth of the program in the Peel Board. Uh, and the educators are really co-learners with the children. So they engage in play with the children. They observe, they listen to what the children are um, saying and what they're doing. They'll record their observations, so they document those. 
Uh, they'll question and challenge the children to extend their learning um, all through the play. And then the educators together will share those observations because that really helps them to uh, program, to plan uh, what the next learning uh, experience might be, to select materials, um, and also to um, construct the learning environment and make changes to that based on things that children are interested in, based on their curiosity um, or their particular needs. And that ties in perfectly to the next question. Um, one of our parents asked, and this comes up often as well throughout the year, how will I know how my child is doing? Uh, so ongoing communication with parents is uh, really important and we, re we really value that. So it's those daily communications um, when we're dropping off children, picking them up at the end of the day, um, and just touching base with the educators. Uh, educators do things to make learning visible. Uh, so they may use photographs. So if you notice behind us, we've got some photographs. They may use um, video clips or learning stories for particular children. Children may have uh, portfolios um, that could demonstrate their learning. And then uh, more formal um, communication goes home three times a year, uh, three times a year, and it's called the communication of learning. So even if a uh, parent is unable to um, talk with the educators every day because they don't pick their children up, maybe grandma or grandpa does or aunt or uncle, they can call the school and leave a message um, and the educators will get back to them at some point. Now during the actual instructional day, the school day while the children are there, they are the priority. So it might be, it would probably be at the end of the day, but they will return the call. Families are a big part of our kindergarten program and um, it's that building of relationship, it's that communication, and uh, to create that beautiful environment for the child and the family at the Peel District School Board. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Um, so let's talk about what a kindergarten classroom looks like. I know you talked about pictures, images. What can you describe to us? So a typical day in kindergarten, so it's very flexible and it is designed to meet the needs of your child. And um, so we invite the children to either, so when parents drop their children off in the morning, we invite them, would, they, would you like to stay outdoors or would you like to begin your day indoors in play? And that, just to reiterate, that's the beauty of having two educators. One can stay outside with a smaller group of children whilst the other one is inside. When we do gather together in the morning for a short story, story time, um, it just uh, brings uh, the classroom, the community together. Um, we invite children to where would you like to start your day in play? And um, keeping in mind that when children do go into play, they're building on many skills. They're making connections, they're investigating and collaborating. They're thinking critically, asking questions as they explore and communicate their ideas to us and to each other. Uh, there's opportunities to have a snack, there's periodic uh, washroom breaks. Um, if your child is feeling tired, there's opportunities to have a rest. So we'll, cre we'll create a, a small area in the room where the child can just have a rest because their bodies are feeling a little bit um, out of energy and uh, there's lunch time and once again large opportunities of uh, play time is available for the children. Um, and what kind of supports are available for children with special needs? At the Peel District School Board we pride ourselves on meeting the needs of all of our students, all of our learners. Um, while your ch child will have a teacher and an early child educator in the room, they're, not, they're only the two people that, we're, that we have on the panel. But there is all kinds of people at the school and beyond that are there to support children. So you need to know that the principal and vice principal are a keen ally with you to support your children. In terms of our special needs children, as well, when you register your child, there is a form called the Planning for Entry to School form that needs to be completed and it is submitted by the school to the central board office and it's reviewed and then someone from the central board office will follow up with you directly. As well, as I said, the principal is a keen ally. You need to have a conversation with that principal, share any concerns that you may have, knowing that everybody's goal is to make sure that this transition for your child is as smooth as possible. So even though they're not able to, if some parents aren't able to attend, the Thursday night 
information meeting, uh, what would you recommend in terms of getting access to information? I know some of it is available on our website uh, through uh, peelschoolsorg slash kindergarten. So that's one resource where you can get a lot of other information, but what would your other recommendation be? Call the school directly. Perfect. Thank you. And that was a question that just came in from one of our parents. So thank you for submitting that. And just a reminder, if you have questions throughout the period, please submit them uh, in the comment section and we'll try our best to answer them either now or at the end of the segment as well. Now, if I could just add to that, sure. um, as educators, it is our goal to um, ensure that all children are successful in the program. So as educators, we may uh, look at the child and think, okay, how can I help this child to be more successful in this particular area? And to give an example, um, if a child is having difficulty in being able to hold uh, a thin paintbrush, we may offer them a larger paintbrush uh, and a larger piece of paper to be able to express themselves creatively. Perfect, thank you for that. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the outdoor play and how that plays into the kindergarten program? Sure, so outdoor play is an essential part of the program. And I know we talk a lot about bringing the outdoors in and using that um, as um, a spark for uh, to further learning, but also it's bringing all of the things that we mentioned early, earlier on, um, the designing, the creating, the problem solving, we also bring all of that outdoors as well. And so I know that we're all really familiar with the kindergarten playground with opportunities for children to uh, build large muscles and to engage in activities that would do that. They'll engage in cooperative games and child creative games, but also outdoor play and outdoor learning, we want that to extend beyond the kindergarten playground. So in many communities, we have wonderful natural spaces and nature trails and fields and, and forests. And um, that's another opportunity to, um, for children to spark curiosity, for educators to be responsive to the children's curiosity based in an authentic, uh, real setting. Um, but it also helps children create that sense of place so that then they become uh, responsible citizens of their environment. So when we talk about environmental stewardship, um, here's where outdoor learning really plays an essential role so that children see their role within the bigger picture. When we when we talk about learning happening outdoors, um, going beyond the tricycles, think about the science that's happening outside in the playground when the snow is melting or the leaves are changing or the worms have come out from underground. And these are some of the curiosities and, and the questions that children are asking. And as co-learners with our students, when we go back inside the classroom, we become researchers and then we find answers, answers to these wonderful questions that the children are asking around science. Yeah, I, I think in one of the video clips, um, we had the opportunity to visit a school and they were they went outside and they had a little um, a little tree stump, a little either a stem or the base of, of, a, of a trunk. And it was shaped into a point. So the question was, how did it get that way? And through research and questioning, they discovered that it was beavers. Um, and that was all based on the natural area within the community. So the educators were responsive. And so what they did was they brought um, books and texts and magnifying glasses and writing materials to the actual uh, space so that children can start making connections to things like habitat and why did they do that? And so that was just one example of how that learning gets extended outdoors. I think to ensure that every child can take advantage of the outdoors and really enjoy the learning, um, it's important that they're dressed appropriately. And that's both for indoor and outdoor. In terms of, it's messy. There's a lot of mucking about happening. So you need to realize that your child may come home not as clean as when you sent them in the morning. <laughs> and that's okay. So you need to be dressing the clothes that you're comfortable with them getting dirty. But as well, um, with outdoors, we're outdoors all year long in all kinds of weathers, weather. So children need to be dressed for that weather. So even when it's a very cold winter's day, mm -hmm. you know, um, like today, children will be outside playing. And so you need to make sure they're wearing their snow pants and their boots and their hats and their mints or whatever it is they need to stay warm. And once again, the beauty of having two educators is that if there are some children who are feeling cold or if, they're, if their clothing has gotten wet, one of the educators can go inside with some of the students while some of the other children can stay outdoors. And provide that extra support. For sure. Right. Okay. 